Hello friends. Two years ago, we spoke about investment in Tencent versus Alibaba. At the point, we prefer investment in Tencent over Alibaba. Of course, a lot has changed since then. You know, from the peak till now, yeah, the China Technology Index has fallen by more than 60%. Uh, Tencent itself has fallen by about 55% and Alibaba by more than 70%. Well, I think for investors with a long-term horizon, uh, this could represent an attractive opportunity. So today, we'll be looking at Tencent versus Alibaba again, but from a very interesting angle, which is how they are doing their investments. This is a big part of their business, but not often talked about. So let's go and take a look. Tencent versus Alibaba. As you can see from this chart here, it represents the amount of operating cash flow from the company that it invests in other companies. So you can see for Tencent, almost all the cash flow it gets from its operations, it used to invest in other companies. Alibaba is not far behind, about 86%. And generally, if you look at it, it, is, uh, it ranks pretty high amongst all the big tech a global big tech companies. And hence, investment is a very important part of both these companies. However, they are often overlooked. Yeah. So in this video, I'll look at it as this interesting aspect of Tencent and Alibaba. So you can see from this chart here, you know, actually, Tencent is not a fund management company, but it incubates a lot of unicorn. Unicorn are technology company that is worth more than 1 billion US dollars. And Tencent ranked globally at number six, yeah, generating the sixth uh, highest value of Unicorn. And this also shows how important this uh, investment in other company is for Tencent. Alibaba is not in this chart yeah, because of the way it's doing its acquisition, which I will share with you uh, shortly after this. So let's look at Alibaba and Tencent's business. The Alibaba's main uh, core business, a uh, core engine, is in its e-commerce. It is also where Alibaba makes most of its money. Tencent, on the other hand, its core engine is in its um, communication services like WeChat, like Weixin, QQ. And their core business actually don't make money. However, Tencent used this uh, engine to be directing traffic to its other businesses like gaming, digital content. And hence, if you can see, when Tencent invests in other business, what it does is after it acquired the business, it used its core engine of the WeChat and Weixin to direct traffic to its investee company. And hence, uh, Tencent is also known as a kingmaker. When it acquired a company, it can make that company a lot more valuable by directing traffic to that company. Alibaba, on the other hand, because its core business is where it generates money, when it acquires a company, it actually uses that company to direct traffic to its core business so that it can make its core business more valuable. And because of uh, the two distinct ways of generating money, the way they invest is also very different. Uh, I'd like to share that the bulk of the investment of these two companies is actually in the ASEAN region. And the reason of that is because ASEAN represents a very vibrant, young and growing population. Which means, you know, by investing in them, there's a, a large growth trajectory ahead. And at the same time, these young people are well connected to the internet and hence are able to use the services of both Tencent and Alibaba. Another look at also, uh, for one, one unique difference of Tencent and Alibaba is when Tencent go overseas, you know, let's say to invest in ASEAN companies like uh, Gojek, you know, uh, Grab, it actually brings its brother and sister company together, yeah, which is its investee company like JD.com, TT and Meituan. Yeah, such that this company can also invest in the other ASEAN companies. Uh, so they prosper together. 
Uh, for Alibaba, they don't really do this, yeah, because as I say, when they invest in a company, they like to in integrate the whole company into Alibaba's business. And one big difference is that when, Ali when Tencent invests in a company, it it's a bit like Berkshire Hathaway. It leaves the management to run the, the existing management to run the business as it is. It doesn't really interfere. The only thing it does is it will add value to the business by directing traffic to the business. Alibaba, on the other hand, when they acquire a business, they integrate it into the existing business. And because they also want to integrate the culture, a lot of time the existing management of the investee company actually leaves the company. For example, when they acquire SCMP, yeah, the CEO actually quit the company. And in my view, the way invest Tencent does it is a lot more sustainable yeah, by leaving the existing management to run the business. Next, let's look at then, you know, with this aspect, how then do we look at investment in Tencent and Alibaba? And at this, at this point, juncture, I will look more at Tencent because its, it's way of investing com in companies is the way I prefer. So if you look at Tencent, its current market cap is about 420 billion US dollars. And the worth of its listed company is close to 100 billion US. The worth of its unlisted companies is also about 100 billion, which means combined, its investing company is about worth half of its valuation, 200 billion. That leaves about 400, 220 billion as a valuation for its core business. And if I look at the latest earnings of Tencent and I extrapolate to the full year, it's about 16 billion. Bear in mind, this is after the, at the aftermath of a 23% decline year on year in its profits, largely because of added regulation and also because China is in the lockdown and hence growth is slower. And I expect, you know, when China leaves this COVID zero and opens up its economy. And of course, now recently the uh, vice premier, Liu He, he mentioned that you know, the, the regulation that is imposed on this internet company has largely come to a, stand, a full stop. Which means I think Tencent is likely to be growing at a faster rate yeah, going forward compared to its previous year. So I think about 10-15% growth of Tencent annually is not unexpected. And with this, you know, the price earnings of Tencent's core business is about 14 times. Yeah. And if, I, if it can grow at about 10-15%, the price earnings growth ratio is probably about one times thereabout. Which makes Tencent, I think, a very attractive price for a long-term investor. Yeah. So in my own portfolio, I do, I do have Tencent. And I think if I don't have Tencent currently, it will be a very attractive point to look at adding it to my portfolio, of course, with a long-term horizon. So that's what I'd like to share, yeah, looking at a very interesting aspect of both Tencent and Alibaba that is not often talked about. And I encourage you to leave your comments below if you'd like to have a conversation with me. And if you like this video, I encourage you to also subscribe to it so that you can see our next video when it's up. And till then, I'd like to wish you a great day ahead and see you again. Bye. If you'd like to be listening regularly to The Grey Rhino YouTube to gain more financial knowledge and also investment wisdom, do subscribe below to The Grey Rhino YouTube channel and remember to turn on your notification.